Well, for whatever reason, I can't seem to upload the webcomic I've been working for two months onto Webtoons for their A Grand Contest. Urgh. Is there anything else interesting I can partake in? <laughs> Hit it, Barney. It begins! Let's see, roughly a year after Ike Perlmutter's influence and power has been marginalized at Marvel, and months after Disney's bid to buy Fox, the Fantastic Four finally returns to comic books. Coincidence? I think not. This issue is a 40-ish page giant that consists of two stories. The first one deals with Ben, Johnny, and Alicia, who isn't a scroll now, I guess as well as the rest of New York still dealing with the disappearance of Reed, Sue, the kids, and the Feature Foundation from several years ago. Today is more relevant because it's the anniversary of the Fantastic Four's failed jaunt to space that gave them their powers. The story initially starts off well with Johnny enjoying a Mets game with White Winged Foot, and Ben and Alicia are enjoying a walk around town until a Fantastic Four flare is seen in the sky. Are Sue, Reed, and the kids back, or is this some insidious plot? One of the things I enjoyed about this story is how it focused on how both Ben and Johnny are taking the loss of their family. With one, they accept the loss, but now is trying to create a new chapter in his life. And with the other, there's a ton of repressed pain that finally bursts through at what's supposed to be a very happy occasion. What I find interesting is, in the past, these roles will have been reversed. Dan Slott pretty much writes a spot-on depiction of the members of the Fantastic Four. An example of this would be, during a flashback, the gang are trying to come back from saving the universe or something like that, but are now lost. The only way to get home is by the power of song. This was funny and heartwarming, and I feel a tad bit bad for Sue. After all these years, no one had the heart to tell her that she's a bad singer. And it was a creative way to get out of a bad situation. The lesson learned here, if you ever get lost, start singing 100 bottles of beer on the wall, I guess. Sarah Pichelli's work here is good, but it does feel a bit odd. I could tell it's her style, but it feels a bit different. Part of the reason may have to be because I believe this is the first time that she's worked with these characters, so it may take her a while to get a handle on them. I imagine by issue six, they're gonna look totally different. Another reason for the different art style may have to deal with the inker she's working with. When you're a penciler, your work will always look different depending on the inker. The second story takes place in Latveria and is about the return of Dr. Doom. A rebel breaks into his castle and begs for help. A couple things interest me about this particular story. One, it seems he won't rely on the mixture of science and magic anymore and is only going to use magic for the foreseeable future. Two, after having his face healed, it's it somehow gotten scarred again. Three, while he was gone from Latveria, someone used Doom's technology and took over the country and named themselves as President for Life. Even though we didn't get the name of the person that runs the country now. Also, I don't think that's how dictatorships work. Four, has his character reset itself? I know this is a thing to do with Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, in that case because writers and editorials always seem to want to keep him as a kid even though he's been out of high school since the 60s and has been an adult since the early 70s, but over the last few years without Reed being around, Doom's character has gone into some very interesting directions. Just like Peter Parker did, well, before this most recent Amazing Spider-Man number one. Ugh. If he's going to revert back to his old ways, then this is just going to be very disappointing to me. This story was also written by Dan Slott. 
it is a good start for a larger story, but it feels a bit rushed. The first story felt more well paced. It hit on several points and was even able to give at least one character an arc. In this one, Doom is grouchy in a dang kids get off my lawn kind of way. And it only takes a few words in order for him to change his mindset, even though he was about to kill this woman seconds beforehand. The art this time is done by Simone Bianchi. This has a darker tone and more realistic detail than the first story. With some of the character models and background details, I get a painterly feel at times. It fits the tone of the story though. Overall, this is a pretty good issue. Both stories are pretty decent. More the first one than the Doom one. The Doom story needed more time to breathe. If it was an entire issue, maybe 22 pages, it would have worked out better. I do wonder, however, will this series have multiple stories in each issue for the foreseeable future? This issue costs $5.99. I imagine the future issues will be $3.99. For four bucks, it might be worth collecting the series as long as there are at least 30 pages of content. Of course, the other option they could do is what DC did with Wonder Woman a couple years ago, alternate the stories with each issue. An example would be issue one would focus on the Fantastic Four, two would be Doom, three would be the Fantastic Four again, and so on. That probably won't happen. That wasn't very well received by the Wonder Woman fans back when they did. This is a good starting point for this volume and has me intrigued on where they're going next. I will give this a try after reading Dan Slott's run on Silver Surfer and Amazing Spider-Man. Well, parts of that run anyway. If you like this review, then please subscribe, click the notification button, and share the video. And until next time, remember to read more comic books from around the world and watch more stop motion and 2D animation. Venture on. FYI, for anyone disappointed in the lack of Fantastic Four in this issue, Marvel hears ya. There's a one-page Impossible Man story by Dan Slott and Scotty Young at the end of the issue that briefly tackles this topic.